Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, it's top five favorite decks for September of 2024. Top five favorite decks day. Top five favorite decks day. Yeah, today's the day that we take a look back at my favorite decks from last month and give them another shot to shine. Plus, we like to, to celebrate those people who made those decks. And this is an opportunity to give them kudos on a job well done. So if this sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. Find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, the Chief Executive Assistant to the Viceroy of Darkness, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Film before a live studio audience. Thank you so much. Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you my top five favorite decks of last month. Yeah, so what the deal is, is that um, every time I start off a new month, I like to look back at the last month and I like to say, what were my favorite decks to play? What were my top five favorites? What that gives me d uh, the opportunity to do is to uh, play them again, play them one more good time, and to also celebrate the people that put those decks together, uh, because I appreciate all of you deck creators out there. That saves me a lot of time, because I just don't have the time to put together a deck and put together a video every single day. All right, so let's, let's talk about what makes a deck my favorite deck. Number one, it has a good chance of winning. So I'm looking for a deck that's... Uh, you know, it's going to pay at least a 60% deck. You know, I want to win probably about two out of every three games. I'm looking for that. If it gets down less than that, it's got to be a really fun deck. There's got to be something really interesting about it. I don't know. Sometimes a good mill deck will, will get me. But um, yeah, usually it's got to be 60 or more percent win rate. Number two, it puts up a good fight. Uh, I'm a big aggro guy. I like to see I like to see fighting happen. I want to have my dudes race out with a little haste right off the beginning. I want to be knocking people in the teeth straight off the bat. You know, even if that's not happening, I want my deck to be a fighter. Uh, you know, if there's gonna be a little bit of like judo action going on, that's that's good deck playing to me. Number three, I like to see interesting cards or interesting synergy between cards. And what does that mean? Like an interesting card to me would be like Urbrask Forge. Why? Because you put it out and that card like puts out a, a guy every turn, a turn that gets bigger each turn. It's got trample, you're getting damage to, it's an ongoing threat, people have to deal with it. And I don't have to invest in anything else. That is fantastic to me. Another card I really liked in the past, Meat Hook Massacre. Oh, I love that card. That was so good. Um, synergy between cards. That's why I like tribal decks is because I like seeing all of the various cards interact with each other. So yeah, synergy and tribalism, oh, that is so good. And lastly, number four, I'm looking for, eh, for bonus points for a deck, a big finish. Um, I like decks that have bomb. Like you put out like the Nissa Planeswalker so that all your guys get trample and plus one, plus one for each land you got. Oh, that is a good one. Or you're throwing out like a Shivon Devastator and you could just pump a whole bunch of treasure and mana into it and that's enough to kill them. That's totally good. Now, I'm not a big fan of like zero turn kill cards. That just feels like cheating to me, but I am a big fan of big finishes. So I don't really know how to, how to, to draw the line between the two, but um, one feels good while the other one feels icky. So anyways, that's what makes up a favorite deck for me, and that's what we're going to see today. So uh, let's get to it. Here's that first deck. I have played against Thor Bjorn in 74. So the mana in this deck is just atrocious. Way too much colorless in here.
I don't remember this being a problem before. All right, there we go. Let's put out the collector. I don't have anybody in the graveyard. There's a bunny. I guess there are vein rippers who we bring back, but Five versus his six. All right, that's good. We'll pop this. All right, remove the Vein Ripper. And get our one point of damage in. Is guy trying to combo me? Welcome to the Thunderdome, baby. All right, so if kill now, that would be uh, one, two, three, four times two times two. So that's eight, 16. So I could do damage and then Starfall Invocation and win the game. Let's hope we can pull this together. Come on, don't get greedy. That's four points you're taking, baby. All right, I think we could just do it. Let's just do this. All right, yeah, we go in. Here we go. Walk. Bump, 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 boom, goes the room. Victory! All right, so here we are with Ripper Rebirth. I gotta say, that was probably the best game of Ripper Rebirth I ever played. What was so great about it was using Coiling Rebirth, the gift, the card, to get this guy back as, as Vein Ripper and his mini-me. And then having plenty of Starfall invocations to be able to just blow away the board, you know, with those guys out there. So like I said, that was going to do like 16 points of damage. All I had to do was fly in to get one extra point in, and then it was boom, boom, goes the room. Yeah, that was a great combo and a very decent, you know, mid-range. We are, I mean, it's not super into tokens. We got tokens coming from Caretaker's Calent. Well, I mean, you have to have tokens out already. Uh, but really pumping those guys out, getting this guy out, having the Sarah Paragon, maybe get more of it out, Carrot Cake, being able to get it more guys out, and then eventually just being able to Vein Ripper them into Oblivion. Yeah, it, it's asking a lot. It, there's a very direct line of, of, of attack on this particular combo deck, but if it doesn't work out the way you want, you still got a pretty decent deck anyway. So there you go. One of my favorite decks for September of 2024, Ripper Rebirth. <laughs>
See, this number always throws me. I think, oh, it's so affordable. Alright, let's see if so we got three guys, four, five, six. Okay, we got enough to out the raw mouth next turn. Let's go after our friend Koth there. Ooh, I didn't need that much. That's cool. All right, you're big. Hopefully you can withstand whatever Koth can throw, because I know you can only do five points of damage to him currently. We have enough here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just blow it away. I start discarding baby pigs. You took the damage. All right, that's how you want it to go, huh? All right, Koth's gone. That's good. We got one, two, and one more to get out the Vein Ripper. They're not as easy to pay for as the Rotten Mouth Vipers are. You got a dinosaur baby to put out? Alright, so Bonehead Dragosaur will always be able to take out Urbrass Forge. That's a problem because of First Strike. All right, let's hit him hard. Here we go. That's a lot. You got to sacrifice, hippie. Give it up, yo. Give it up. All right, he's blocking the one guy. Chumping the other. Right, it's down to five. Things are going to be disastrous for him next turn. You got so much, you can't do it. All right, there we go. Victory! All right, so we are with Reanimator Ta Talent. Uh, I was just thinking, why is this called Reanimator? What brings things back? I don't know. Uh, is it the Extruder? No. Man, I don't know why we called this Reanimator. I'll have to go back and take a look, but this was on my list of the things I liked the best. What it was really all about was getting out tokens and uh, being able to sacrifice those tokens to braids and being able to sacrifice the tokens to get the rotten mouth out early. So, and then Vein Ripper allowed, you know, allowed me to have out dudes and then to cause a lot of damage. But uh, we had a little bit of control. We had, um, but it was mostly about token generation is what it felt like. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know, man. Anyways, I liked it. Why did I like it? Because it was Urbask Forge. It was an urge badge forced it, and we were making use of those little forgelings. They were just coming at. We'd be able to sacrifice it. We got the tokens. We were able to sacrifice all that stuff. There was just a lot of utility cooked into this particular this particular deck. It was relentless. That's what I liked about it so much. 
All right, so there you go. Let's call it Relentless Talent. All right, playing against Pro Edge. Pro Edge. Three mana. All right, so we could potentially wait on Paw Patch. Not sure I want to. It's probably not worth it. We got a lot of them. Let's just get it out there. What a jerk. I'm going to teach him what pain's all about. There you go. How do you get red? Oh, you're playing Jeskai. Good for you. Is that an enchantment? It certainly is. Let's gift him with something. I should have played that the opposite way. All right, I can't block it. The Silent Hall Creeper's coming at me, brah. I should have popped these early. Yeah, cool. Let's do it again. Since I know I got the, the mojo on me. All right, so it's showing eight. I got tons of guys. If he's still focused on just attacking me, he's not going to get very far. Protection from red and green. That's a good card for him. If he saves back for defense, what's that really going to get him? You could probably draw something. Maybe get a lucky draw, baby. Nah, you're just defending. What else? And we win. Winner, winner, victory dinner. All right, so here we are with Trample Aggro. Uh, I got to say, Mono Green is a very fun deck from an aggro perspective. I like how, look at how cheap this first line. We got so much stuff for one. I mean, I guess these two right here are a lot more than one. This one here wants to be a three. This is a, this is a little creature control, and we got one guy really to drop for one. Still, that's something. We got stuff to do for two. Everything likes to come out for three. This is practically a money ball deck. And then uh, we got, do we have a lot of trample in here? Is it just enough? It's not, I don't know why we call this trample. I think it's because we give trample from something. I seem to remember something like that was out there somewhere. And I'm not seeing it. Oh, there you go. Here we go. When he goes plotted, gives trample. That's yeah, something like that. Anyways, it was a good green deck. It was tight. It was played with a bunch of new cards. Um, we didn't have anything from Dusk Dumb to come, mostly because I had this thing from before Dustborn came even out. But still, it was a good deck. I liked it, and I thought it was good. You know, the green decks have been fairly solid. For a while, they just suck so bad, but they've been pretty decent. And this one's got a bunch of good utility for a green deck. A lot of variety. Uh, being able to take out enchantments, that's always good. 
You'll be able to search your stuff for better cards. Maybe get out more lands. This guy is fantastic in my opinion. So all together, 100% great deck. One of my favorites. And I got to can't do nothing but recommend it. That's one of my favorites of 20 of September 2024. Our playing against M A G Man. Three mana, great obliterator. Cool. Nice to go up against red. <laughs> All right, cut down. That's not great. He's got two different ways to kill in the obliterator. I'm not going to stick so hard with that. All right, let's let Liliana do what Liliana does best. Should I stay away from putting shouldered out? I think that's probably a good idea. I'm gonna do shouldered. I'm gonna do her. All right. One, two, three. I can get him with the other one now. Yeah. All right, we're up to five. Here's number six. Not that we have anything in the graveyard. Come on, I drew a card. Let me have my life. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, this would be a great time to put out the obliterator. Obviously, he doesn't have creature removal. I just saw that he has that, uh, what is it, the virtue up there. I knew if he had creatures out, he'd just be pumping them up. There he goes. All right, so you can, you can sack it. There you go. Because now if you're just looking to do damage, Obliterator is going to be the man. The board wipe would be extraordinary. He's not going for board wipe. He doesn't seem to have it. You got nothing. All right, good game, baby cakes. Here we go. And we win. Mono Black for the victory. I'm right, here with Mono Black 2024 Standard. And that's kind of a boring deck name, but it's just a generic Mono Black deck with a nice mix of stuff. You know, it's what's the kind of nice about it is it's got a little bit of uh, hand hate in here without being overly hand hatey. It's got a, uh, it's got a lot of good creature control. We got life gain, um, and it just kind of gets into the end game where we're like pulling dudes out of the graveyard. Right there, Squar in the middle is Phyrexian Obliterator, which against the right decks is just incredibly good. Like if you're going up against Mono Green, you know, like Green or Red, yeah, this guy is the Devil Incarnate. Yeah, Blue would just keep bouncing him back, but still, it'd be a great card to have out against Blue. It's, it's black and white you got to worry about because those are the guys that don't care about physical damage at all. Still, I mean, this deck is just great with utility. It's just a, a nice, even deck. It's like butter on bread. This deck is so good.
All right, so that's it's just such a great deck. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. If you have the ability to put this deck together, it's always going to be top shelf. It looks like it's just full, though, of, of Mythic Rares. So it's going to be a hard build if you don't have a, a complete library so far. So good luck putting it together. I would highly recommend it if you could. It's uh, Mono Black 2024 Standard. All right, playing against Roddy87. Roddy. These guys are slow. So we got nothing going on until turn three. That is not great. This deck is fantastic. It's just that you got to get your mill guys out early. And we did not hit them. Lurgoyf is needs the third mana before he can really deal with it. Who's he going to take? I'm not sure he's smart enough to take out Lurgoyf. I'd go for either, like, if it was me, I'd just go for Shouldred or Glarb. There's Glarb. Alright, we're down to two. We have three. We can take that guy out. We can glare back if we want. All right, so we got four, which means we can get shouldered out. This guy's packing all black. That's not cool. Put out the Marauder. Give it up. Something you like. Apparently you like everything in your hand. Board wipe. That requires four extra. That require, we can use those guys anytime then. He doesn't have the ability to kill, otherwise he would have gone after it. What are you gonna do, man? Like, why would you waste the bat like that? Shouldred, shouldred, everybody likes a little shouldred. Let's glarb up. Well, that's not cool. You don't like glarb, huh? That's your big deal? Yeah, one more card. You can put a dude out to block, shouldered. All right, I worry about board wipes. You saw he had one of them. I guess I'll just come after him with the uh, archaeologist if I have to. And we win. We didn't have to pull out the archaeologist. So good job. Victory. 
right, so here we are at the self mill deck. Yeah, I really enjoyed this deck this this month. Uh, you know what I liked about it is because you know you're you're trying to mill yourself. We got a lot of guys that help to facilitate that, and then you just get into a lot of great cards at a really decent cost. And so then it's just like, look at me. I'm just playing awesome cards. It doesn't cost me anything, very 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 little, and uh, I could just keep at it. I think maybe reanimator might be cool in here, but the thing is, those reanimator spells don't you know pay attention to creatures in your egg, you know in your uh, graveyard to make them cheaper. But it doesn't matter because I can play them because we're putting plenty of dudes in. You know the funny part is that the game I just played, we just couldn't really get to our uh, our mill guys, our self mill guys, and you know you might want to mulligan to that at least once to try to get one or two of these guys in your hands to start off with. Because that really helps you get to the rest of your deck going. But uh, no, it just has a good feel. Uh, it has lots of great guys. And uh, if anything, I don't know, the blue might be a little bit of overkill. Just a nice school Gari version of this might be better. It's just more efficient type of thing, just because sometimes you're choking on not having the right color for the cards that you have. Other than that, though, I, it was a great deck. It was really fun to play, and I thought it was an interesting uh, setup to go for. So there you go. One of my favorite decks of September 2024, Self Mill. All right, so here we are the with the list of my top five favorite decks from September 2024th. Uh, let's see, it was Ripper Rebirth, Reanimator Talent, Trample Aggro, Mono Black, and Self Mill. It's nice to see that I had some uh, new names on here, as in Hardy and X Equinox. Uh, but there was some good um, people from before that I, I tend to play all the time. Who Guess and Pobe Planunti. I never can pronounce it. It's poor Planeswalker. Those dudes are rocking. Uh, my Magic GG, I don't know who put that to deck, that deck out. It came off the Platinum Mythic list, and Magic GG just recorded it. Still, it was an incredibly good deck that I really, really enjoyed playing. All these decks were interesting. They had great um, uh, makeups to them. They made them interesting to play, and they were fun. I, you know, I tend to go more the aggro way, and you could really see that in the decks they end up picking. So anyways, if you decide to play with any of these decks, I hope that you have as much fun with them as I did. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the underground secret headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.